All right, and I'm gonna quickly share my screen so we can get the very exciting stuff happening. Da, 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 share, and go to full screen mode. All right, hello everyone, and welcome to Halloween and T1D, tips and tricks for a fun and safe holiday. We are so glad you're here. We would ask that you take the poll as you come into the room and make sure that if I move my microphone closer to me, that might be helpful also. And just make sure we know a little bit about you before we get started. But we want you to know a little bit about us. We are your hosts. Um, I'm Stacy Sims. I am the author of The World's Worst Diabetes Mom. I'm also the host of Diabetes Connections, a twice weekly podcast for and about people with type one. And I will tell you more about my connection to type one, which is my son. And Anna, introduce yourself. Sure. Thanks, Stacey. Um, I am Anna Sabino. I am a social worker and diabetes care and education specialist. And I also run my own private practice from home um, called Finding Smiles Coaching. Thanks for having me, Stacey. I'm so glad you're here because as a parent of a child with type one, it's always so helpful to have someone who lives with type one. You know, yes, I, guess I forgot to mention that. Oh, I, I didn't am, even uh, know they forgot. 33 year veteran of, uh, of T1D with my Omnipod 5 here sitting right next to me. <laughs> <laughs> so, what we're going to try to do is go through this presentation pretty quickly and take your questions because we know you have a lot. Um, Halloween can be really, really stressful, even if you've been through it a couple of times. So, feel free to put your questions in if you want or in the chat. Um, we will definitely get to them, but we have a brief presentation. So first I want to tell you a little bit about me. Um, so my son, Benny, was diagnosed back in 2006. Um, this is him just before his diagnosis. So we've had 15 Halloweens with type one. We really had 16, but we didn't know it because uh, this was him about a month before he was diagnosed. It was, I mean, right at the beginning of December. So right at the end of October, yeah, he was floundered. This is him, he's, he's not yet two years old, <laughs> flounder. For, it's the only year I got them, my kids in matching costumes. I have, a, five, I have a, a, a daughter who was five years old at this time. She's three years older than Benny, so she was Ariel. He was flounder. Um, and this is him at the end of this past summer. I didn't have a Halloween costume for the last couple of years because he is 17 now. Um, this is Benny at the end of camp uh, with a broken hand because that's how he rolls, but he is very independent. And we'll talk more about that a little bit later on. And Anna has a picture that she wanted me to share. Yeah, so I couldn't I couldn't go all the way back until, you know, when I was, I don't know, this was, that was the age of pre-digital photos back right. in the like late 80s. Um, but this is a picture of me from graduate school actually um out with some friends and yes that is a uh, a drink in my hand and um doesn't seem like there's too many kiddos that are in the teenage years but that's a whole different conversation too so um halloween certainly lives on into early adulthood <laughs> <laughs> so anna's definitely going to chime in and help me do this presentation um but like i said we're going to kind of zip through it and let you know a little bit about what we've learned over the years and what we think might help you as you look forward to what is really for most people just a, a fun and, and bananas holiday. And the pictures are great. So I wanted to share some pictures of my son over the years with Halloween. Obviously uh, this is a long time ago, but I like this photo because he's got his insulin pump on. Um, as we set the table here for what we wanna talk about today, this is what you're gonna leave here with. You're gonna have a plan of action. You're gonna know more about candy. You're gonna have some ideas about how to educate your lovely friends and family and neighbors. And we're gonna talk about costumes and diabetes technology. So Benny was convinced at this age that Bob the Builder had diabetes and why not? Because he had that tool belt. Uh, Benny has his own little belt here that had the pump pouch on it. So this was an easy and fun costume, one of my faves, but <laughs> my goodness, it was a long time ago. All right, so when I say plan of action, what I mean is it's a really good idea to decide now how you're going to manage Halloween, because there are a lot of choices, and I'll talk about those in a moment. But how does Halloween look to you when you think about it? Is it, we're going to stay home and give out candy, that's what we enjoy. Is it, I cannot wait to run around the neighborhood with my friends and family. Um, we have a big group of kids at the bus stop who've been talking about Halloween for weeks, and we're all going to go together. Is it a party? Whatever you decide to do, and whatever management style for diabetes, Make sure that you talk about it with the kids in advance, because even at this age, and Benny is not yet three here, this is our first Halloween, and I'll tell you what our strategy was and why he's so happy, but even at three, 
you can communicate to your kids. This is how we're doing Halloween because they do talk about it at school. They talk about it on the bus. They talk about it at preschool. You know, they talk about it in fourth grade, whatever it is, they know what they're doing. And so it's a lot easier if you know what they're doing so you can tell them. So what I mean is, <clears throat> are you going to do what we did this one year, which is the switch, Witch? right? You've probably all heard of that. We didn't call it that. We just said, give us all your candy and we'll give you a toy. You're going to trade in your candy. You're going to run around the neighborhood, get as much as you can. But I was scared that first year. I didn't want to manage all the candy. So I just got rid of it and gave him his Play-Doh set, which he was over the moon about. Um, are you going to say in advance, okay, tonight you're going to have two pieces of candy and then we're going to have one piece in your lunch or in your dinner or whatever that's your treat, or you're going to say, we only do candy on Halloween, and then we're giving it away the next day. <clears throat> Excuse me. Are you kind of family <clears throat> that lets your kid at four years old have 400 pieces of candy? Maybe you are, but decide in advance <laughs> how it's going to go. I would highly recommend you check in with your endocrinologist on this. They know your child like nobody else. They may have some great strategies for you. They may know what other families are doing. Um, you know, just check in. And then this can change. It changed every year for us for a long time. The second year I paid my kids for their candy, which was ridiculous. I gave them like a nickel or a dime. So stupid. I mean, it was fun, but I say it was stupid for us because they didn't know anything. They didn't care. It didn't mean anything to them. Right. And then I had to go run around and get change. So that was not a lot of fun. And after that, we kind of made it more normal, but I do know, and I, my normal, I mean, like, you know, a couple of pieces of candy, what I would have done without diabetes. What the heck's going on with my voice? <clears throat> Sorry. And then um, just real quick, uh, some families do parties instead of trick-or-treating. So just have a plan, know what it is and communicate. And Anna, take it away for a second so I can recover. No, more. yeah. Grab some water, Stacey. One, one thing that I like strongly remember as a little kid, and I was diagnosed in, in kindergarten, and this was again back in the early 90s where there were no smartphones, no CGMs, no pumps. Um, my dad came around with the neighborhood kids with us and we collected them in our bucket and he said, okay, you could keep five pieces. The rest I am going to sell to my coworkers. And I got, you know, 25 cents for every piece of candy that he sold. And I came back with, you know, he came back with a five or $10 bill. Yeah. Right. He gave them away to all his happy little coworkers the next day. But, you know, then we went to, um, what was then Target and I got to pick something out. And that was what mattered to me when I was six. What matters to an eight-year-old, a 12-year-old, a 16-year-old is gonna be completely different. Um, but that's why just emphasizing again, you know, have a plan, talk about it, you know, a week or two ahead of time because kids, kids like routine and they like to plan and they go bonkers when they've got a plan in their head and they, you know, they have that tantrum or that meltdown when they're seven or eight and they're, they've got some idea and it, and it goes haywire. So yeah. have the convo, you know, three, four days out. Definitely. Okay. So let's talk about candy real quick. This is my daughter one year when she was an M&M. No, oh she God. was a crayon, an M&M. She was a crayon. <laughs> I can't keep the costume straight. And that's the candy hall. You know, that's just part of it. So, um, a lot of people will say, this is the, this is our chance to get low treatments, right? You've seen the memes and the funny stories, like we're going to run around and get all the low treatments. I actually do not treat candy. I do not treat lows with candy. We never have. I don't judge. Everybody does it differently. It didn't work for us because we are a family that allowed desserts and treats here and there with or without diabetes. So when my son was diagnosed, I mean, how much candy are you giving a two-year-old, right? He wasn't having a lot of stuff back then anyway, but I didn't want him to think he could only have candy when he was low. And so we only treated Lowe's with juice boxes and peanut butter crackers for years. It was super boring. Mm -hmm. And I wanted it to be that way because I did not want him to, I, I just was afraid that he would make himself go low if that was the only time he got a Snickers. So just one of those things to keep in mind, but we all parent differently. A lot of people love having a candy stash. That's the low stash and they're going to go for it. I got to tell you also, if there's candy in my house, I'm eating it. So the low stash would immediately become my middle of the night guilty treat. So that wouldn't work for us, but everybody's different. If you do treat lows with candy, please know that not all candy is created equal. So simple sugars really fast. Complex candy slows things down. What does that mean? If you have any candy with like dextrose, uh, think about like 
um, the simplest, I mean, candy corn here, which is kind of gross, but here it is on the screen. Um, things like Skittles and Starbursts and pixie dust, right? Perfect example. They still make those pixie dust straws. Um, yep. Very, very fast. Will bring up a low very quickly. May not sustain that blood sugar if, if, the, if the child continues to drop, but will bring you up quickly. If you have something more complex, like a Milky Way bar, you've got fat, protein, and sugar all working together. This is a very simple layperson explanation. Um, it really can still bring up blood sugar, but it will take longer. And it will also sustain you for a little bit longer. So if you're not sure how candy, I mean, we get candy on Halloween that we've never seen before, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, sometimes you're like, where did that come from? Or your kid has never had it. Um, but just know how it works. Anna, anything to add on there? Um, no, I think the only thing to add there is that, you know, and I feel like, and I'm one of those people that dug into the candy stash and had a couple of Reese's more like eight Reese's yeah. peanut butter cups the other day. Come on, we're real humans. Um, the the portion sizes of the candy is getting smaller and smaller and mm. smaller each year. So just before you either, you know, if you're handing them out or you're taking them in, try and figure out if you can the amount of the carbs. Um, there's charts everywhere. Everybody shares at this time of year, the candy carb count. You don't have to be exact because it's just supposed to be a fun holiday. Um, and I don't know if we're going to get into this, Stacey, but when you're going out trick or treating, make sure you have that simple sugar on you um, because a Reese's peanut butter cup and you're, if you're running around neighbor to neighbor, that's not going to do anything. Um, right. So we can talk about that, you know, later on, but um, uh, completely agree that, you know, Skittles and Starbursts are the way to go to, to treat a low. Um, but keep in mind those portion sizes because they may be a little bit less or more than what you're actually used to treating a, a low with. Yeah, that's a good point. Those little snack sizes. All right, let's talk about educating friends and neighbors because sometimes this is the hardest part of Halloween. Um, many friends and neighbors mean well, but they, um, they just don't get it, right? The execution is a little off. Um, so I'll tell you, let me go back here real quick. Um, real story that happened to us. Um, one year, Benny, it wasn't our first year, but it was close. Uh, we rang the doorbell. The mom was so excited to see us. And she said, I have something special just for you. And like, she ran back and she had, she had this big bowl of candy right at the front door. And she ran back and she brought Benny a very special pencil. And, you know, I kind of elbowed him and he was like, thank you, you know, but he didn't want the pencil. And it was kind of a bummer for him from that house. So what do you do when you have that kind of situation? So this is why I say proactive conversations. The next year I started doing this at the bus stop and I would just say like, Hey, what are you guys going to do for Halloween? Well, we just learned that, you know, our diabetes is really different than when we were kids. And my favorite on this is our doctor says, because those are the magic words. And if you haven't, if you don't have that in your arsenal for anything diabetes related, use it starting today. Our doctor says that Benny can have whatever he wants for Halloween uh, our doctor says insulin is much faster than you might remember when you were a kid. Our doctor says, you know, whatever. And it really is the magic word and helps. Or even, you know what, I'll run that by my doctor because a lot of people will give you unsolicited advice this time of year, you know? And so if you want to stop that conversation, say, thanks, uh, you know, email that to me. I'll run it by my doctor, you know? And, my, and you can, I don't know if you ever plan on doing that, but I've said to many people, you know, our doctor said that was interesting, but doesn't really apply to us. You know, I don't know. The other thing to keep in mind with friends and neighbors is, um, do I have this on here? Is sugar-free candy. Yeah. Um, yeah, right. <laughs> is to, um, if, if you are given that and you don't know, you know, you can Google that. It's very uh, much not bathroom friendly. Let's just put it that way. You don't <laughs> want to give your kids sugar-free candy. That will, it will make them sick probably. And it usually has just as many carbs. So mm -hmm. those are some things to just kind of, you can definitely tell your neighbors that like, please not with the sugar-free candy. Cause let me tell you what happens, you know, and that's funny. And everybody understands that kind of stuff. And you laughed. I don't want to ask if you learned that from experience. Um, <laughs> when... <laughs> One time in like first grade, I just remember the bus driver, it, you know, had type two diabetes and he gave me some sugar-free peanut butter cups mm. and at the, at the time they were delicious. And then, you know, a few hours later, my tummy hurts. And <laughs> we learned yeah. the hard way, but 
Um, and again, you know, it's one of the, it's one of those holidays where you kind of have to, it's a first. So for those of you who are, you know, this is your first year, it's going to be trial and error. You're going to figure out what works and what time works. And my three and five-year-old, we have figured out that we need to give them dinner before we go out um, at like five or else they're just going to be hangry beasts and eat Reese's peanut butter cups for dinner. And I kind of don't want that. <laughs> oh yeah. you got to do dinner first. That's a rookie. Mistake. So, um, but I think, you know, our doctor says is great. You know, I think one, one silver lining with the pandemic is that there's oftentimes like not a lot of conversation happening at, at, at doorbells these days. So a lot of times it's just grab what's in the basket and go. <laughs> so there's one plus maybe. Um, but yeah. Okay. Oh, and then practice politeness. Yes. Because, yeah. um, you no. may get a pencil and you no. know, it's a good idea to teach your kids that the only pr proper response that night is thank you. Um, you know, if you don't like the candy, thank you. Even without diabetes, just, yes. you know, teach them. And this is a good lesson for us too. You know, like if a teenager comes to your door, we don't, you're a little too old for that. You know, just say, here's some candy. Let's just be kind to each other. Yep. All right, let's talk costumes and diabetes technology. Um, I'm gonna move this because on my screen, I'm blocking Benny. Another costume with my son, he was a Minecraft. I don't know, I think that's Steve from Minecraft. So costumes and diabetes tech. This was never a big deal for us, but I heard this over the years from a lot of parents mm -hmm. that they get really concerned about trying to fit the tech under the costume. You can kind of see again, he's got the pump on his belt there. Um, this was in the olden days and my son really, I think took better care of his diabetes technology. He's now 17 and he just shoves it in his pocket. And it's like, I don't know, no cases, no nothing. So we, most AID systems, most systems in use, I shouldn't say that, I don't know what the adoption rate is, but many systems in use now have phone control, right? Omnipod always had the PDM, the separate controllers. So you could put the pod anywhere on your body and operate it. Tubed pumps had not had that until much more recently. But I, I mean, to me, it was just like, let, let him wear it under his Iron Man costume. If it's lumpy and bumpy, you know, you don't need to get to it every single second. You really can be okay, you know, just a couple of times during the night. Um, consider the weather. This is the health reporter in me. I used to be a health reporter for TV and radio. And when I lived in upstate New York, you had to like worry about weather and it was cold and Anna's nodding. You're in Massachusetts. I'm in Charlotte, North Carolina. Like it's hot on, in October still. So half the time the kids like are taking off their costumes because they're sweating to death. So, you know, just think about those. And again, I know it's easy to say like, don't worry. But I, I truly think your kids have such great imaginations. They don't care if there are bumps on their body from their diabetes tech under their Iron Man suits generally, right? I mean, sometimes this can be a sensitivity for some kids, but most of them really don't. So if you're concerned about it, try not to put that on them is all I'm saying about that. Right, Anna? Yeah, I was just going to say like, you know, they, this is one of the most looked forward to nights of the year yeah. from a kid's perspective they, you know, you worry about their, their diabetes, but don't let, don't show it and let them just have fun as much as you can. Um, and yeah, most, most devices now, if you're using an insulin pump, whether it's the tandem, um, with the phone bolus or the control IQ, just, you know, okay, it's a number move on, but yeah, where I grew up, it was like you had to wear a winter coat. And it was like so lame. The costumes would have to like fit over the coat. And I was like, I'm not wearing a coat. And that was always the number one battle with my mom. Oh. <laughs> In so, my house. <laughs> I, one of the things I want you to think about is what will you remember? Because I am a mom of older kids. My kids are now 21, almost 21 and almost 18. So this photo is probably six years old. And then you can see them as babies in the photo next to them on my man, on my little table mm -hmm. there. And I'm not saying like, oh, it goes so fast. You know, but it, it does, but it, you, you still earn every year and you still like, it doesn't go as fast as, as I thought it would. But I will say that what I remember about Halloween is not Benny's blood sugar. I do not remember the, um, you know, did, did he go low? Did we treat that? I mean, certain things do stand out. We used to take, and especially for the first few years, my son was diagnosed in 2006, did not have a CGM for several years. So we used to put his meter in his little Halloween bag and just take it around with us. And the first year I probably checked his blood sugar every block because I was terrified. But after that, it got easier and easier. And so what I, I don't remember the blood sugar numbers, and I really don't remember worrying, you know, overnight. But what I do remember is the fun costumes, the great memories, the silly photos, 
you know, and the good time that he had. So as we go through that, as we answer your questions, I just want you to keep that in mind that, you know, you really can have, and you will have really great memories from these times. And boy, the pictures from Halloween are so much fun. So very briefly, before we get to your questions, I told you it was gonna be a very quick presentation. We have a lot more we could talk about and we will talk about, but we have a couple of things we want you to keep in mind about us going forward. First is that I have a book coming out. The book is the world, still the world's worst diabetes mom, which is the sequel to the world's worst diabetes mom. I have a whole chapter about Halloween in there, but the book doesn't come out till November 1st, which is why I'm doing the webinar now because it'll be good for next year's Halloween. If you use the promo code SPOOKY, you can save $3. You will be getting an email with all of this information. So we're just going to go through it real quick. You don't have to write anything down. But I want you to know that the book is, um, is all about our experiences with type 1 growing up and how um, help my son become more independent and confident. And Anna has a great program going on right now. Yeah, so, um, and this is something I wish my family had growing up, but this is designed for uh, families who have kids who were diagnosed in the last, you know, one, two, or three years. It is a um, five-week program. It starts next week. Um, it's an hour and a half, and it's really designed for families who are looking to connect with other families, talking about mental health and validation, um, setting setting some boundaries and, and really some foundational opportunities to set your family up for success. So check out my website there. All the information um, is right on there and obviously happy to answer questions um, towards the end if there are any. Okay. And then how can we help? This is Benny <laughs> in 2019. He's a freshman in high school. Oh my gosh. So I'm going to stop sharing. I, I love that costume. That is one of my all-time favorites. It's it so looks creepy. like awkward to walk in. Yeah, I mean, he's over. Oops, I just went backwards. He's over on the left, right? Those are his legs over there on the left. And I don't I know. He just it. sticks. They're like they're stooped over. Definitely one for kids. All right. So we already have some questions. Okay. Oh, the first one was when is, is it? How we'll be able to watch it again. All right. So this is really easy. Um, later, probably later today or tomorrow, you will receive an email and it will have the recording. So you can share it if you want to. It'll have the links to all the stuff we were just talking about, the book and all of that. And I'll try to find one of the card counts that Anna was talking about to slip that in mm -hmm. there from like Project yeah. Blue November or Beyond Type 1. Um, so if you have any questions for us, you can go ahead and ask. But one of the things I do want to talk about that wasn't in the presentation, and, and I'll start and then you can weigh in on this. Yeah. Is I know that we didn't talk about blood sugar. And we didn't talk about, maybe some of you thought this would be advice about how to keep your kids at 95, you know, or between 80 and 120 all of Halloween. Um, if we're new to each other, that's why I am the world's worst diabetes mom, because that's never been my priority. Um, no. Yeah, I want my kid to have a lot of time and range. I want him to be healthy. I want him to be happy. But um, I never went to the endocrinologist and had him say, you know, ooh, this is a really bad A1C. And uh, it's because Benny went to 275 on Halloween. You know, I mean, that never happens. Um, Halloween is a blip. It is very hard to target correctly. And it's not just because of highs from candy. It's because, and this happened to us for a couple of years before we caught on, and I think, I think you know what I'm going to say, mm -hmm. you're probably going to try really hard to bolus for every bite of food, right? Your kid's going to eat a, a dinner, a very healthy dinner before they go trick-or-treating, and then maybe they'll have a couple of Hershey bars along the way, the little snack sizey ones, you know, they need it, they're a little low, they get home, they pick out their candy, you've done a great job, and then they go to bed. And then at two o'clock in the morning, they're 65 with two hours down. Because they're, you're not used to all the exercise and activity on a Tuesday night. Like when did your kid walk a mile through their neighborhood during the week or whenever it is? And also all of the excitement skyrockets them, you know, the adrenaline and everything else. So you're treating that number when you probably don't have to. So it's like a sports thing and they crash. So that overnight low is so common. And and I saw you agree. Do you want to add anything there? Yeah. I mean, the only thing I'll say is like, and we alluded to this earlier, you know, it's not the night to try and, you know, perfect that flat line graph. Um, that's my own personal advice, you know, let them, let them be a kid and also know that there's 80,000 other variables that always play into what a blood sugar does and wants to do like adrenaline and stress and hydration and making sure they have water and did they have a sports practice after school so um 
you know, think about that beforehand. You know, the other thing I would do, especially if they're going to be out with friends or, you know, for older kids listening later is, um, you know, don't put on a fresh pump site, like five minutes before they head out the door to go trick or treating, you know, make sure it's a, a site or a, a CGM that is not in a warm up period, if you can avoid it. <laughs> um, and make sure that they have, you know, uh, fast acting glucose on them. Um, number one, but I'd say from a blood sugar perspective, you know, being being high and a little out of range, just in, enjoy the night. As, as a parent, number one, um, and be safe. Yeah. I got a really good question that I'd, I'd like to address with, from Leah, or Leah, excuse me, who says, what is, my daughter's name is Leah, so I always pronounce it that way. What is your number one advice for moms and dads? Mm. And I, I think we can start on Halloween and kind of widen this out. And um, I, I really think it's to see that you're, to, to look at your child as a child and not a number. And to remember that you're raising a child and not a blood sugar. And I, I know that you could say like, well, of course I'm raising a child. But I think that we as parents get, and I still do this. It's been 16 years almost, right? And, and I know that I shouldn't do this, but we get so wrapped up in the numbers to the point where if your child does go really high on Halloween or really low, you may feel like you have failed them. I mean, we're going to see a lot of posts on Halloween that say mom fail oh, did I mess up? Or we had the worst night. And it won't be about the kid having fun or the kid learning or the kid troubleshooting or the parent troubleshooting. It will be about a number. And so I think that it's really hard to do, especially in this day and age when you've got all these people on social media, I mean, literally holding up like first day of school signs that now say A1C 5.8 or whatever. Um, it can be very difficult to not compare yourself to them and not want to join that club of straight lines and post photos and look how great we did. And by the way, we pulled off a spectacular Halloween where I had a party for 47 people. I cooked for three days. Our house is immaculate. My porch scape is beautiful. My hair looks great. I don't know how moms do it now. I never did that. I never could be perfect in any way at all. And I think there's so much pressure to be perfect, not just on diabetes, but in all these other aspects. So long way of saying my number one advice is stop trying to be perfect. It's unattainable mm -hmm. and focus on raising a, that whole person warts and all and understand that ups and downs are going to happen. And your kid, your kid will be safe. Your kid will be safe and grow up happy and healthy. And I love that. I mean, <laughs> I, um, I had posted in a, in a different Facebook group looking for what, what was the best piece of advice you were given as a parent when you have a newly diagnosed kiddo. And the most common response was kid first, diabetes second, kid first, diabetes second. And I could not agree more. Um, you know, I was a kid and yet with type one and yet I did pretty, I we did everything that um, that I wanted to do. Yeah, did I get like pencils and popcorn some years instead of candy? But I don't, That that's not like, I don't hold a grudge about that. And I think what's so hard as parents is we think that this is affecting our kids a lot more than it is. And when they're six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, they don't have the moral capacity to think just how our brain is functioning and thinking about that worry about that long-term impact just yet, even though we want them to, <laughs> um, but their, their, their biggest worry is what is my costume going to look like? And we have to lean into that worry and take one for the team when it comes to the other side. So I truly, truly agree with Stacy. Um, go buy her book on the day after <laughs> Halloween and read about it. Um, or come see me as a therapist if you're struggling because it's hard. It's hard when you and your child are at different levels of processing what is what you really want them to get out of. And, and mm -hmm. diabetes does not have to dominate their, their childhood. Um, There's another question. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. No, I'm good. Another question from Catherine, which I think is a great one. Um, my little dude is on control IQ. Your comments about experiencing high BGs and then crashing in the middle of the night made me think of this. Should we put him in exercise mode or a lower basal rate to avoid the pump overdoing the correction insulin? I'm going to give this to Anna. I'm also going to say this is going to be very general advice, not specific to your child because we don't know your child. Yes, 100%. I mean, 
if you, I wouldn't, and I would say this to anybody, you know, I wouldn't have Halloween be the first time you try this. It, you know, if, if a temp basil or activity mode or exercise mode in your device has worked for you in the past for a gym class day or a basketball practice, go for it. Um, but I wouldn't have a night like Halloween where you're walking around in the dark be the first time you try it out. Um, and again, that's a question for your individual endo. Um, but this is this is a perfect scenario. I will say I, I do think control IQ should, you know, kind of should do its job and, and suspend that. Um, but again, you, you know, your you know, your kid um, more than anyone. And here's what's fun about experimenting with stuff like this. So you're going to do it and you get it right. And maybe your kid's six years old, right? You're like, wow, we really nailed it. Well, then next Halloween, your kid is seven and has a completely different body. It's like, oh, oh no. They're <laughs> three inches taller, right. fighting insulin resistance, or in the middle of the growth spurt, all the things. Uh, um, great question about um, Halloween parties at school. Mm -hmm. Lena asked again. Um, so here's, here's my advice on Halloween parties at school. And I totally stressed out about this because there would be so much garbage, right? Every holiday. And then it's like, so you've got Halloween and then Thanksgiving, for some reason, you have to have chocolate oh, yeah. turkeys and then it's Hanukkah Valentine's and Christmas. And then and Valentine, like, it was so like candy stressful. All the time. Um, looking back, I don't have a specific strategy for you. Um, although we can talk about that, but I will say like the, the overview now that I'm a mom of older kids is it didn't really matter. It didn't really matter that much. Um, and I say that because we let him participate. We didn't say you can't do anything. There were times when I'm like, you can't do it all. Like bring some of that stuff home, but we let him participate in it. We talked to some teachers sometimes about can everything, everything not be about candy. And a couple of the teachers were great. They, the, my favorite was his kindergarten teacher told us, we didn't have to ask. She said, there's no candy and there's no birthday cake coming into this classroom. On birthdays, give me a book. And that's how she did it for everybody. She's like, kindergartners don't need to be bouncing off the walls. And I was like, thank you. But that's not going to happen commonly. So I would try to work it as best you can. If you know in advance, that's wonderful, but that doesn't always happen. But I will say, looking back, my son is a senior in high school. And while it stressed me out moment to moment, I am amazed. I don't think it really mattered that much in his totality of his diabetes health if that makes sense. Anna, do you have strategies or anything? Yeah. I mean, I also am of them like right now, my daughter's in kindergarten and there is no, you know, it's a peanut free school. You know, there's, there's so many more restrictions now with like peanut allergies and all, all the things. And half of the candy has like peanuts in them. So yeah. I would actually be really surprised if like public schools are allowing a lot of candy type Halloween parties my, my daughter's doing like crafts, um, you know, instead of the like food stuff. But as a kid, no, I, I don't, looking back, it was never the like holiday party or Christmas party that was going to contribute to my, you know, extra sugar long-term, any mm -hmm. sort of like long-term stuff. Um, my mom always was just like, oh, if someone brings in cupcakes, just have Anna scrape off the frosting. Cause that was the stuff that was going to, but this was also pre-pump like injections twice a day. So yeah. I didn't even have a meter in the classroom. I, I didn't even check my blood sugar during the school day. It was, you did it four times a day and went to the nurse. If I felt low, this was back in like the, yeah. the olden days, I guess I'll say in 1995, but um, again, you have to do what's right for you and plan ahead, you know, contact, email the teacher, find out what the plan is, or if there is a plan, um, be that volunteer that goes in on Halloween. If the teacher needs volunteers for any sort of school celebration, and this is applied to, you know, any school celebration, I'm sure, um, you know, check the school handbook. A lot of times, like the information is in there, reach out to the school nurse. One of the things that I did, and I'm, again, the world's worst diabetes mom, I never went to school, but I never went to school. I mean, like I said, we all do this differently. And I know a lot of kids, a lot of parents who go on field trips and they're there for the celebrations and it does make it easier. I never went. Um, I was working and I couldn't go. So, and I didn't want to go half the time. So what I would do was I would give the teacher at the beginning of the year, I would give the teacher a cheat sheet and I would send an email. I would ask the teacher to email all the parents. Um, I would always go in and talk to the class. My son has diabetes. We'd read a storybook, blah, blah, blah. 
And my son liked that and I liked that. Not every parent wants to do that and that's fine. Um, but I would give the teacher a cheat sheet and say, if you're not sure, here are estimated carb counts. So if somebody showed up with cupcakes, I mean, we didn't have a school nurse full time. So my son was doing care in the classroom with the teacher. Again, every school is different, but it really worked out well because if somebody showed up with cookie cake and they had no idea what the carb count was, they could look at the cheat sheet and say, oh, we think it's this. And we know that Stacy isn't going to freak out if we give him 25 carbs. And it was really 35 carbs. You know, we were very relaxed about that. As long as they made the attempt, right, we were not going to be upset. Um, I would get upset if somebody brought in cupcakes and they said, you can't have one because we don't know, right? That's the fear. So um, I think these celebrations are very stressful on us, but at the same time, you know, um, it's, it's not something that I feel has really cemented in my son's brain, maybe because we let him have a long rope at school. And I don't think it really mattered in terms of his day-to-day -day care. Um, we got another question about teal pumpkins. Mm -hmm. What is my opinion? Um, uh, my opinion on teal pumpkins is I thought they were for allergies. Are they, are they for more than that now, Anna? Do you know? Um, not that I know. As far as I know, it's more of an awareness, you know, a visible way of showing awareness or that, you know, this house is really, or we're, we're displaying that we provide, um, sort of this like non candy option mm -hmm. for, for trick or treating, or, um, I mean, I'm also of the mindset of, you know, and we, we, at my house, we give out a variety. I don't want my kids to think that candy equals treat. Um, so we're going to, and I have a lot of friends who have kids with allergies. So we are giving out things like pirate's booty and we are giving out things like pencils and erasers um, and some candy as well. So I, I think it's more about just what you want to do. Um, and I, I don't have an opinion on it either way. Um, I think it's a great idea. Um, I think it's more for families where if there's a blue pumpkin around, they know it's like safe to go there. But I also think you can't, it's an exposure opportunity where it's, it's a teaching tool right? to, to talk about, you know, what's, what's safe and what's not. Um, yeah. I think it does come back to, I mean, if you, I'm of two minds. So I will say my answer to that is I do not plan on having a teal pumpkin. I'm again, an older mom in my neighborhood. So I don't know the kids mm. that are coming through. I'm just going to have big generic, lots of candy and leave it up to the parents. My feeling is if parents are trick-or-treating with their kids, they know what Halloween is. The parents understand the transaction that's about to happen, right? I need a trick-or-treat. Thank you. I better get my thank you. I am that mom, yeah. right? So that's the transaction that's about to happen. But if I know, and I go to the bus stop and I know that my next door neighbor has an allergy and the kid down the street has a need that I'm aware of, why not accommodate that? Why not show that family that you're supportive of it? So I think that's terrific. The only thing I would add is around these holidays, sometimes I do see people in the diabetes community saying, why not us? Why don't we have a teal pumpkin? Why don't we have the awareness? Why don't we get the special attention? And it's not popular to say, but I would just be a little careful of that. Um, I'm not saying that that's why you asked about it. I don't know you, right? I don't know your question, but we, we do see that pop up from time to time. I think the answer to that is, you know, let's talk about what's meaningful to us, to our community. If that's meaningful to you, then spread the word, right? We don't want to make diabetes completely invisible, but um, everybody does manage this in their own way as well. Um, and it's not, it's not a one size fits all. Some people will eat the candy, right? And some people won't. People with allergies, you know, with food allergies, they can't, they just can't. So I, I think that there's, there's an interesting discussion to be had that I'm not prepared to have right now, but I'm, I'm obviously I'm going down that road because I'm the worst. <laughs> but I, I think again, it's, it's about just being kind to each other and being understanding about what's out there. And then the other question that was there before we start to wrap this up, I love this question from Yvette who says, when will your book be on Audible? Thank you, Yvette. Terrific. <laughs> <laughs> um, it will be available on Amazon in paperback and the Kindle ebook edition on November 1st. Audible is going to lag behind. It did last time too. Um, it's a little trickier to get the book on Audible. My hope is that by the middle of November. So the first book is available on Audible and everywhere else now, but it takes up, it's an, that's another, I could do a whole podcast episode on doing an audio book. It was so interesting, Anna. 
I highly recommend it, but it's a different process than writing the book. I find myself like acting it out. It's crazy. <laughs> All right. I I'm trying to think if you're doing that. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Um, if you guys don't have any other questions, this was terrific. You had great questions. Um, I'm just trying to think if there's anything we want to say before we go. Um, my kids favorite houses on Halloween provided water, which I thought was really mm -hmm. silly. They would give out like mini bottles of water. And I was like, who does that? And then you realize your kid is running and sweating. And, you know, if you have, I'm, I'm sure many, most of you have experienced Halloween already, but um, hydration can be key <laughs> as well. So maybe throw a little bottle of water into your kid's kid for that night. Yeah. Yeah. I don't really have anything else to add, Stacey. I think it's just have fun. You know, it's like any other like 4th of July. It's like any other holiday where you just want them to be a kid. And if it's your first time experiencing Halloween with T1D in the picture, try to remember that, yeah, you're just, you're their mom or you're their dad or you're their primary caregiver and they are looking to you and your attitude around it more than anything else. Um, so if you can kind of pause and just remember that they're trying to be a kid and have fun um, while trying not to frantically, frantically check the follow app or um, anything else, you know, post, Post your pictures of your kids in their costume, not necessarily, you know, about the, the blood sugar that resulted from it. Um, Before we let you go, I do have one more thing I want to share with you. And that is that I have an event coming up. Oops, why is it not moving? There it is. This is coming up in January. Oh. It is mom's night out. It has nothing to do with Halloween. In fact, it has nothing to do with your kids. It is just for moms of kids with diabetes. It's the first event of its kind happening in Charlotte, North Carolina in January. You will get an email with more information about it as well. And we've got people coming from, I'm so excited, all over the country to this event. It's uh, a whole night out. You'll be able to meet me and Anna and hang out with us. We're going to have stuff like uh, cocktails and crafts. We're going to have lots of time to socialize and meet other moms. And it'll be a conference where you can also learn about technology, Dexcom, Omnipod, Tandem, all the guys, big guys are going to be there. All little guys too. I've got lots of great fun sponsors that are giving us stuff for the swag bags. Um, so I'm really excited about this and you'll be hearing more about it, but definitely reserve your spot because it looks like we're going to hit our registration. Um, did I get, oh, Sorry, I'm just looking, I'm zipping through to make sure and see if, it, if we missed any questions. We just have fabulous comments, which I really, really appreciate. You guys, um, you know, this isn't easy and there's no way to get it exactly right. I have bad news. Anna, your children are little, it's bad news for you too. There is no finish line for parenting and there is no trophy when they say you did it right, good job. It is bananas how you just never know. So we're all you doing just, our best. You just never know. I <laughs> I had a I had a pump site fail, a random thing, like pod error, like at one in the morning, three nights ago. I'm like, what the heck? That's never happened before. Okay, move on. Carry on. Go with the beeps, move on. Oh. And then my son just turned three and he was up coughing randomly for like two hours last night. I'm like, what the heck? You know, you just <laughs> you just never know. Um and it's, you, you plow through it and we are resilient humans because of it. So, um, Catherine, I hope you can, I'm pretty excited about having a night away from my kids, even though knock on wood, they don't have type one. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to hopefully, uh, yeah. sleeping through the night in Charlotte. I think so. what's funny about mom's night out for me is I think Benny's going to come and volunteer. Aww. So you guys can meet him. And I think he, we're, he, he was joking about like his mission is going to be to see how many moms he can make turn off their follow for the night. Ooh, I like that. Like, right. Like a challenge. Cause the dads are at home. Like somebody's taking care of your kids. Like it's okay. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. All right, guys. Thank you so much. There's no pressure, by the way, if you want to come, you don't have to turn off your follow. I get it. <laughs> have a great Halloween. When you get the emails from us in the next couple of days, we'd love to hear from you. If yeah. there are more topics that you'd like us to talk about. If you have questions about Halloween or anything else, please let us know and please um, sign up for Anna's stuff. She's great. She's great. Yeah. Thanks. Stacey. <laughs> and you're, you're still, we spend a lot of time together. So yeah. um, I hope you guys like us. <laughs> <laughs> Not we're the worst. All right. Hey, thank yeah. you everybody. Have a great Take day. Care. Bye.